it's Ivy Slater, and you're listening to Her Success Story Podcast, a show where gutsy businesswomen share their success journey. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I am so excited to have a really special guest today, uh, a guest that's connected through several people of people I, you know, people I know. So it's all, I'm always all about relationships and the relationships in my life have brought me to our guest, Jonay Williams. And she's in a dynamic woman, started as an attorney and has now developed a whole business that she's going to share more. Um, I always say I could read your bio, Jonay, but you, you you're so much more interesting than your bio. I'd rather hear from you. How in the world did you land having, um, going from attorney to staying an attorney, developing a coaching business, speaking and making an impact on thousands of entrepreneurs. Um, yes. Yeah, so thank you for having me. Super excited to be here um, and speak to all of your listeners. Um, how I became a attorney slash coach slash, you know, all the things. Um, I started off with my business model being that of a traditional law firm and um and just realizing after growing it to um to a really amazing level and seeing that there was so much more that i wanted to um offer and what i ended up offering with with a lot of my legal clients was strategy and like you know business advice and you know spirituality advice and all of these other things that um, that we would end up talking about just in our sessions where we were talking about their legal work. And I realized that with my, um, with my artist clients, they needed to know so much more than just how to take care of their, their legal work. They needed to know about entrepreneurship. They needed to know about how to move themselves forward and negotiate and do all of these various different, um, things that had to do with them, creating their own foundations and living their life to um to the fullest while they were pursuing their dreams in addition to what they need to know legally so um the law is something that i feel was an entry point to something that that was so much more than what i had originally bargained for but i'm grateful for that because i love being a lawyer and i also love the work that i do so i would say that i'm definitely on track with what i was meant to do in this world so in, in, in growing this entity that will, I'll just refer to it as for a moment, um, what have been some of the challenges that you've faced in this journey? Um, I think that some of the challenges that I faced are things that many entrepreneurs face that around, um, for example, the financial piece of knowing when you should uh, grow the business, when you should be conservative, what 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 needs to happen in how you um, take care of your team versus take care of yourself, paying yourself, and when can you do that? And like all of these different things that have to do around finances. The other thing that comes up is, um, to me, entrepreneurship is really such a great personal development tool. It's the best personal development tool because it's the relationship with yourself. So all of your stuff comes up, how you, um, how you deal with relationships, how you put yourself out there, what you really want to do in this world, how you want to change what you do. Um, how do you deal with, um, you know, romantic relationships and friendships and how do you communicate effectively? How do you, you know, discuss your boundaries? How do you do high quality work? All of these different things that come up that really are challenges around, you know, yourself as you're also trying to put your work out in the world and make a living to it, which is very primal. So it's like you have this primal desire to take care of yourself, take care of your business, make sure that your basic needs are cared for and and you have this desire to continue to grow and be effective and love your, um, you know, love the work that you do and have an impact and and then there's the next level of like being philanthropic and giving to causes that you care about and all of these different things and it all kind of goes back to the same center point, which is you. So I've encountered so many of those particular, um, those particular aspects of growing as an entrepreneur. And I think that 
um, it has made me a better person because it also showed me where I wasn't being so great, where I was being a bit of an asshole sometimes, or where I was being really um, amazing, or where I didn't know that there were certain things about me that were really awesome that people said were great that I just thought were just me. They weren't things that made me unique or special, but people would say, no, this thing that you said really helped me or this way that you, um, the way that you worked with me, it impacted my life. And people emailed me from years ago or interviews that I've done or things like that. And you're not even realizing because you're just working and living and doing you. So it was just, you know, learning all of those different things, just facing myself and the way I want to put my expression out in the world, I think has been like the challenges. <laughs> so I, you know, there's so much to take on and I, and I love that you're actually sharing and you're being incredibly authentic of how much there is to take on in, in entrepreneurship and building out a business. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I know going back to my early days as a business owner, early days, which I'm talking about like late twenties, early thirties, um, that we had the luxury of our accountant used to come into the office every month. And that's where I really got my MBA in business, you know, that mm -hmm. I actually learned how to manage money and how to deal with finance. And mm -hmm. when, when, when do you push forward financially and when do you push back? What do you hold on to? How do you move your money around? Mm -hmm. um, and there is a piece here that as I'm hearing you talk is I'd love to ask you about the vulnerability of putting yourself out there. As, as we establish you know, our own entrepreneurship, we're putting ourselves out there in a very vulnerable way. Yes. How, how have you navigated that? Um, I think the biggest thing that, when I, first, when I first became an entrepreneur, I really just didn't care about if people cared about what I was doing. I wasn't worried about, that because I was so mission driven. I was just like, I have to, I like, my goal is to empower artists. And we got to help them. And da, 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 da. Like I started off with my law firm being called the artist empowerment firm. So it was so about that, that I really didn't care about if people cared about this mission. Cause I knew from previously being an artist that it was necessary and it was important and that it needed to be done. Right. So and when I initially started, I didn't have that. But then as as I started to grow and evolve as a human being and, you know, face all of those things that other people face um, as you're kind of putting your work out in the world. And the deeper that I started to care about it, the the more I felt precious about it sometimes, the more sensitive I felt about it or when I felt like people didn't get it. There were times where um, where I felt like, man, you know, I, I, I have to figure out how to explain this better. Or I have to figure out how to do this better or, or what's wrong with me. You know what I'm saying? Like there, there's all of that, right? You know, like you're, you know, you're, you're really trying to, to, you know, you're trying to ride the horse and trying to figure out how to get the saddle up there and jump on it and hold the reins and it's bouncing around. Like you're doing all of that. And, um, and so, and in this stage of being an entrepreneur, um, you know, I feel like that happened all like kind of in the startup phase. And now that I'm on the other side of that, I think that what, has happened now that has helped me is to not take anything personally. I trust in, um, in power that's greater than me. And I trust that the right people will come to me and the right people will work with me. And I will be drawn to the right relationships, the right circumstances, the right people. Um, and you know, I just, I follow my gut instinct, which if you look at the most successful entrepreneurs on this planet from the Tony Robbins and the Warren Buffett's and the, you know, all of these people that you're looking at and the Oprah's and the people that you're looking at saying, wow, this person really has it together. They all say one thing, trust your gut, trust your instinct, trust your intuition. And that's the one thing we trust the least. So and I think, go ahead, go ahead. I love, I love your sharing this because that is one of the key things in growing any business. Mm -hmm. um, I say to my own clients and I say to myself and I have for years, what is my gut telling me about this? What is my gut telling me about this? Yeah. And the thing is, is that I trusted my gut before I even knew that that was a thing. And I just continue to keep um, doing that. And I think that, um, 
we, you know, as an entrepreneur, that's the thing that we trust the least. Like we're, we're up here trusting what the market says and what the rates say and what the, you know, and what's crashing and what's, you know, what taxes are this and that. And you're looking at all of these things and you'll start to get confused. You're getting your head and you're like, what? I don't know what to do. You know, you'll start to feel that frustration, but you have a voice inside of you. Your, your inner guide, you have that. And that is the voice that's going to ultimately lead you down the path that is the the right path for you so you have to learn to hear it listen to it and trust it and act accordingly in alignment with it and I think that um, that's where I am now um, and have been for quite some time and, and it hasn't led me astray ever so, that voice hasn't <laughs> <laughs> okay so now I, now I, I am gonna run with this for a sec here mm -hmm. so based on trusting our, trusting our gut which we're both believers in Mm -hmm. Has any surprise? It's like all of a sudden, like you know what we? I, I have a feeling we both are strong believers in the laws of the universe and mm -hmm. and, and and trust and action out there. Mm -hmm. um, with this conversation, ha, has any surprises? Like wow, I trusted this, and wow, look what showed up. Any surprises come your way? Mm, that's a really good question. I think that one of the surprises that came up is, is a little bit unorthodox then. Um, I, I decided that I was going to leave my apartment in New York, and um, but I still wanted to stay in New York. I wasn't <laughs> planning on leaving. I was like, you know, I'm going to leave my apartment. I'm going to leave where I live, but I want to find another place and I want to keep, you know, doing what I'm doing. Um, cause also it's really expensive in, in, in New York to break a lease too. So yes, it is <laughs> it, being a fellow New Yorker you the whole get New York city concept <laughs> living in New York is expensive no matter what you do. Yes. No matter what you do, it, it's expensive, but you know, I knew that I wanted to leave. I knew like energetically, my gut was telling me you're done with this place. And I, and I knew that, and, but I wanted to stay in New York. And so I was looking for another place. And those of you who are New Yorkers, you know that, you know, the market trying to find an apartment in New York is not an easy task. It can be really trying. And it was wearing on me. I spent like a month going, making appointments, looking at places, and then trying all the various different areas. It's like between, you know, New York and New Jersey and all the surrounding boroughs and then the city, uptown, downtown, like Harlem. Like I was all over the town. Okay. And then finally I was just like, okay, universe, clearly this is not working. I am tired. I get, I get it. There's something that I'm missing here. And you, wherever it is that you want me to go, I will go there, but you have to open the door and you have to make it clear, open the door, make it clear. I'll go. Show me the sign. Show me the sign. Show me the clear, the clear indication that this is where I'm going and I will go. You know, I will figure it out. Whatever I need to do, I will go. And it opened up in New Orleans, Louisiana, of all oh, places. Nice. Like, and, and it was very clear. It was a very clear sign. It was a very, it was a super easy process to get a place to get a place. I had angels that were helping me. They were just like, you know, between the realtors and the, and the landlord, like all the people, like none of these people know me. I haven't even seen this place. I haven't gone down to New Orleans and looked at this place, but everything was aligning to where it was just easy. And that is the thing that people need to understand when it comes to intuition, like your intuition is um, it will create a road of situations, circumstances, and people that you would have never been able to conjure and put together yourself. And that's how you know that it is the right thing because you could never put it together yourself. Like it had to have been divinely aligned for it to happen that way. So that's when you know that it's real. And so I did that. And it, and it quite honestly, at that time, it was the best decision that I've ever made in, in, in alignment with like my vision and my dream and where it is that I want to go next and where I want to grow to and, and how I want to grow as a human being, how my work wants to grow and evolve and develop. Like I call New Orleans Mama Nola because <laughs> I, felt like, I felt like I got kind of like, it's kind of like she scooped me up in her arms and gave me a big kiss on my forehead and hugged me. It was like, it's okay. Like, 
you know, and it was just, it was amazing. And, and, and I could have never thought of that because I wasn't intent on coming down South. I was intent on staying in New York and doing what I was doing. So that being said, it's like, you just kind of have to, when you feel the pull, you need to follow that, especially if the doors are closing in another area and they're opening in some other area, then maybe you should try the other area because we're never supposed to be going upstream. We're always supposed to be going downstream, not against the current. So. so, and so staying with the flow and being aware and the key, what I hear you say is listen, mm -hmm. yes. listen to what's going on. Stop fighting it and, and, and letting go of the resistance. And letting go of what you think is the best idea for you. Cause it may not be, you have an <laughs> idea in your head of what you think the best thing is, <laughs> but it may not be, you know what I mean? It may not be, it might be. Um, your strategic plan might have been created out of certain situations, certain circumstances, certain, you know, wounds, certain things that were going on that have nothing to do with what's really right for you. So if the universe is sending you in a different direction, instead of resisting that direction, maybe try embracing it and things might get a little better for you as opposed to being so attached to the way it has to happen. Just you ultimately, we all just want to be happy. You know, we all want to be happy. We all want to do good work. We all want to help people. Like, that's what we want. So does it really matter how it comes about? Or is that just you being a control freak? Yeah. And <laughs> sometimes our biggest problems is letting go, go of control. Yes. And I'm not saying it like I'm preaching from the mountaintop about this. Okay. Like, <laughs> I have had the situations where I felt like, um, you know, where I wanted to not let go of control, even around the search for an apartment, you know, like just, I know where I wanted to be. I know what I wanted to look like and all of that. And at the end of the day, I landed in this gorgeous city in this beautiful place that just kind of came and was handed to me the same way my New York apartment was kind of handed to me. So it's like, you can't, you, you have an idea, but maybe, just maybe, if you trust that the universe is actually looking out for you, and it's actually bringing you to the desires that you want, if you let go of the way that it has to come about, you will still get what you want. Um, I, I, you're, you're, you're preaching to the choir because I so agree with you. And, you know, I'll out myself because I, I usually just will just put crap out there. Mm -hmm. uh, the, some of the toughest things for me to do is to release control. I am a control mm -hmm. freak. I like to have things handled. Mm -hmm. Yet I also have a strong belief that I trust the universe and I trust the, the system, the journey, the process. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think in strong women that, you know, we're aware of it and we always have to continually check in. Remind, mm -hmm. remember, remind ourselves to check in and say, hey, am I trying to control this? Am I flowing with it? Mm -hmm. It's true. And I think that one of the things that we don't pay attention to is we don't pay attention to the fact that, um, you know, everybody talks about releasing the outcome, but in actuality, mm -hmm. it's like release the process. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, don't think that, like, no, and, and, you know, say, I have this desire, this is what I want, and release the way that it has to be done. For the control freaks, we have to release how it has to be done. You know what I'm saying? Not the outcome, because most control freaks are pretty confident that they're going to get what they want. Most of them are. Most. Pretty late. Most, most control freaks are like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to want what I want, I'm going to get what I want, and I'm going to control it until I get it, like kind of thing, right? But if you actually say, okay, I know what I want and keep the, keep the, keep the uh, confidence around, I know what I want and I desire it and I'm going to get it, but I'm not attached to the way that it has to come about. I'm not attached to the process of how it has to come about. Then that's where the magic can start happening and then you get out of your own way. Because a lot of yep. times when we're in control, we're getting in our own way and we're not allowing the universe to do its part in the work and... All that is, all that is, is just attachment and it's not going to lead ultimately to your happiness because the universe wants you to be happy, but it also needs you to get the hell out of the way. <laughs> so, uh, touche, touche, my friend. <laughs> let them, let it do, let it do its work. So, it's true. Um, uh, question for you. You obviously have, um, 
built a great business and built a great life for yourself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we forget that, you know, building a business is in to achieve having a great life, not instead of. Um, And so often there is relationships that in our journey that have been, you know, um, made huge impacts. Has there been any specific relationships that you can say, you know what, I so value this relationship? Yeah. Um, I would say that my relationship with Marie, um, Marie Forleo, right. um, has been a huge, um, my relationship with that woman has definitely um, affected me in some very deep and profound ways. Um, and and it, it's, I feel very blessed to have been, um, to have worked for her and to have learned from her example. Like, she's a very um she's a very dynamic and really a good person in, inside um just like a good human being and then also being in witness to her the 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 community that she's built around herself in terms of the people that work for her and the way that they work together as a team and the way that they uh care for each other and the way that they make sure that she's cared for like all of these beautiful things just to be in witness of that because we hear it we hear about the importance of it but but to see it actually in practice and being a new entrepreneur at the time being somebody who was kind of new in the game at the time that um, seeing that was such a powerful example, like seeing a woman be such a powerful and strong leader, but in a very feminine way. Like she's not forceful. She's not, you know, uh, patriarchal and ah, get it done. And she's not an asshole. Like she's very, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's grace. It's grace. And that to me is, um, I learned from that example. I learned how to be gracious um and to be grateful and um the aspects that she saw in me about why she wanted me on her team you know what i'm saying like seeing some it's a lot to see a mentor have the foresight to see you and say you are um you're amazing and you know i choose to work with you because i see this like that gave me the confidence you know, to continue to pursue down my own path, you know? And so I think that that relationship was one of the, one of the pivotal relationships that I've had in my life. Um, And having her as a client, it was, it was such a, such an important and powerful part of my own journey. And I would say um, one of the other relationships that really, really impacted me was my relationship with my assistant. um, Mm -hmm. Because she was so uh such a stand for my business and such a stand for me and just realizing the importance of like being a woman and saying I deserve support (laughs) I deserve good support I just I deserve so you know it's interesting because so I'm I'm gonna reach here because I don't know this information so I want to ask a couple questions did you start as an attorney in New York yeah, I'm a, um, I am an attorney in New York. Like my, um, my um, license is New York. Mm-hmm. So, you know, very much, you know, this city, New York City is, is very much a boys club, especially in that field. And then mm-hmm. seeing the other side of what a woman business owner can be, that she can be strong, she mm-hmm. can be decisive, mm-hmm. she can be smart. And it's not even can be, she is. You know, she's a strong woman, a decisive woman, a smart woman. And she doesn't have to be a man. No, she doesn't. She can still be feminine and and can be gracious. And, um, and, you know, you can have grace and not be a pushover. You know, a very, a a, a really powerful example of that is Michelle Obama. Absolutely. She's so graceful and she's so gracious, but you can also tell that she's also very strong and she's not a pushover. Like she's grounded and confident and powerful and all of those things. And also she's somebody you want to hug. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, like you want right. to like sit it, out it, and have it, tea with her and be it, like. You took the words right out of my mouth. I was like, that's a woman I want to sit down and have a cup of tea with. Right. And, I, and we feel we can. And there's right. something here about women in leadership 
that women leaders don't need to be men. We don't also need to be assholes, as you well said. We don't have to be obnoxious. We don't have to be mean. We don't have to be dictatorial. Mm-hmm. And we women don't have leaders to, we, today get to define what that looks like. It's true. And we also see that, honestly, um, I read something the other day that said the patriarchy doesn't work for men or women. And I was like, hallelujah, that is the truth. Because it's not just about being a man or a woman. It's about this patriarchal way of operating in business and in life that doesn't work for anyone. <laughs> it doesn't work for any of us. Okay. Right. Um, so quite honestly, I feel like we need to create new models, like the old boys club and that old dictatorship type model. It all needs to be disbanded and we need to um, integrate and come together and put together systems that will allow all of us to thrive. And I'm not talking about politically. I'm just talking about um, if we're talking about business, you know, you, you can't just be, it's all about the business surviving and you don't think about the people who are running it, you know, and I've seen, you know, we've all had bad bosses where they don't care about your time off. They don't care that you're having a baby. They don't care that you need to spend time with your family. They don't care that you need to get off at a reasonable hour. They don't care about anything other than seeing the business thrive. And that doesn't motivate the team. It doesn't make them feel like they want to do the best for the team. So what I've seen work in leadership is knowing that the leader actually cares about you just as much as you're all coming together to see the business thrive. The business is like a baby and the village is raising the child. And you have to think about it in that way. And you know what? I am, I'm completely endorse that. And I think it's women leaders today who are changing the way women are in business. And you're right, it's about the village raising the baby. No one woman or one business owner or one leader makes a company. Right, I agree with that 100%. And to see the way, um, and you know, I've been in a practice of really paying attention to um, leaders because that's the place that I want to play in terms of being a really good leader and not just a good leader from being a great speaker or being somebody who does the work that I do well, but being some, but being someone that is also, um, that pays attention to how you treat people, how you motivate people, how, what are the things that make people tick, that make people want to do the best job? What are the things How can you honor them? And when I'm working with my clients in my mastermind right now, I, um, you know, with one of my clients, um, she had a team member go above and beyond and do a fabulous job. And I said, well, how can you honor him? What do you know about him? And she didn't know anything. And I was like, you need to know about like, you know, what kind of things that he likes. What does he do in his spare time? Can you, instead of just buying him food, which should just be a given, you should just, you know, provide food for your team. Instead of just doing that, can you get him his favorite, you know, brand of bur- bourbon? You know what I'm saying? Can you? Right. It's, can it's, you what you're saying is it's in the details and we have yeah. to know about the details. Yeah. Do, did, did he just have a baby? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are the things that you can do to acknowledge who he is as a person so that he feels seen, not just as somebody who works for you? Um, you know, one of my, my business manager, my previous business manager, I was going to Paris and all she could talk about was like, oh, I just love their silks and their, you know, their this and their that, just talking about the fabrics that she loves in Paris. I bought her a silk scarf from Paris, you know what I'm saying? And it's in her favorite color. How did I know that? I knew she liked the fabric. I paid attention. I kept a database on things that she enjoyed. I knew that she liked the color purple. Like I got her a purple scarf. It made her day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like she walked around with that thing for, you know, a week because of the fact that I saw her. I just paid attention to what was important to her and I honored her by saying, I'm giving this to you and I'm honoring you. You've been doing such a great job taking care of my business while I was on vacation. I'm so thankful for that and I got you this. And she felt appreciated. And I think that you you need to understand that behind these computers are actually people. And how is it that you can connect with them on that level? And that doesn't take away from them being productive. It just makes them more productive. Right. So in closing, any particular one tip, because we, you, we've, this um, interview, which I love, has covered a lot of tips for women, for women who are building businesses out there. And yes. 
scaling businesses and expanding businesses. If there's a little summary of like, gee, you know what? And all this great, great info, here's one thing don't forget. Um, I had another thing in my head, but then universe popped in and was like, okay, this is what you're going to say. I'm like, all right. So um, what business women um, need to know that I think gets overlooked and that they don't pay attention to is when you have, because we have a lot of fluctuations in business. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some months where we're launching things. We get a nice big cash windfall. There's some months that are a little more lean holidays, vacations, you know, people, it's summertime, whatever, what you need to do is a lot of times people think, oh, I got some extra money. What can I invest in my business to grow it? Um, at that time, that's not what you need to do. What you need to do is when you get the windfall of money, put a chunk of it away for the lean months because you're going to have lean months. So while you got the windfall, instead of trying to figure out how to invest it more, take it and put a big chunk of it away so that when you do have a lean month, you're covered. And whatever is left after that, then you can look at it and say, okay, what's the next level of growth or investing or whatever it is that you want to do with it after that point. But to cover yourself in the lean months, make sure that you have a, a stash of money um, packed away when you get those big windfalls, when you're doing launches, when you're, you know, in a big, uh, you know, one of your big sales months or whatever, just, just, you know, stack your cash so that when you do hit summertime or whatever time is like the lean time for you, that you're not, you know, you're not in that, um, you know, client to client, paycheck to paycheck type of cycle, whereas expansion and contraction. As entrepreneurs, we always want to get rid of that expansion and that contraction stage. And you do that by making sure that you're covered on those months when you don't have it. So listeners, what we're talking about is a strong financial plan, not living or playing feast to famine, Mm -hmm. but actually creating a financial plan for a long lasting, stable business. So, right. And that can be, and, and that ends up being very, um, that can end up being very different, looking di very different for, for everyone. Right. Different, thing, different business models, different approaches, but the concept goes across board. That concept does for sure. Yes, it does. <laughs> Well, Jone, thank you so much. Tell our listeners, um, you're an amazing, fascinating woman who's done great things. Um, and more important things, act, more importantly, actually not just great things, but fascinating and interesting things. So definitely check out Jone uh, on social media and your website and give us that information. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so if you go to at J Williams ESQ, so J Williams ESQ, on all social media, you will find me. So that's Twitter, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of those things. And if you want to go to my website um, at jonawilliams.com, that's J-O-N-A-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S.com, then you'll find like my universe of like coaching and law and, you know, all the things that I do. <laughs> right. What you do is you go to jonawilliams.com and you see what a mover and shaker and a woman can do in this world, make an impact Thank and you. enjoy the journey. And I'd say one of the biggest tips that I'm taking away and that's resonating with me, and thank you for bringing it back to highlight, Jone, is ladies, gentlemen, listen to the universe, listen to your gut instinct. Don't yes. discount your, your inner thoughts. Yes, and let go of the process. <laughs> thank you. It's been a joy having you here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And, and I hope everybody enjoys the interview. Thank you. Thank you.